thinking with portals, that's what we're gonna be doing today because I'm gonna show you how to make a pair of procedural portals and have an object go through them. Just like this little indie game, maybe you've heard of it, it's called Portal, whatever. That, that's what we're gonna be emulating. Can we please end this horrible, horrible introduction and get into the, you know, the? let's just start. So this is the one file that I made. Uh, this is what we're gonna try to recreate and emulate and you know, that whole thing. And you can see basically I have this box. I made a tutorial on the CG Matter channel about how to make this. Just saying, uh, we have this box, it's being thrown into the orange portal and it comes out with the same physics, kind of like the same arc as if it's one simulation, comes out the blue one and completes it. And it might be easier to see through look dev mode. So just this is just generally how it looks like. So you can see it kind of changes the box like angle and all that, like it makes sense. It, it looks like the portal game and you might be thinking, okay, how did you make a simulation teleport? I didn't, I just have two boxes doing the exact same simulation, just inverted. You know, that that's the trick we're going to be using. They're going to be lined up. And if we look at it from the right perspective, it'll look like, you know, we actually did it, but we didn't. So let's talk about how to do the simulation, how to make this portal, which is a couple notes, you know, just a few. And, um, and uh, wow, this is a horrible intro. Let, let's just go. So new Blender file. I'm going to be using version version 2.9, I believe you can use 2.83. The reason I'm using 2.9 is just for some of the denoising options that make rendering faster, but it doesn't matter. Just uh, make sure you're using 2.83 and above because we need vector rotate node. Gonna start off with a plane, and this is where we're gonna have our portal just gonna be projected on this plane. So I know, very complicated modeling, but we're already halfway done with the tutorial. We, we've already done the modeling. So shading is where we're gonna be making our procedural material. This is where all the work's gonna be. So material, don't need that BSDF. I don't know why it's taking a second to update. Maybe it's the 2.83, maybe I should, uh, Oh, never mind. I'm an EV. I'm an idiot. Either way, uh, we have the plane. And for our material, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in texture coordinates. And you might be thinking, okay, what's the point of texture coordinates, whether I'm looking at generated UV or object, uh, if it updates. Uh, the point of it is we want to make a portal, which basically means we need to make a circle, right? A circle centered on the center of the plane. And then we want to make it wiggle and glow and be look like a wall outside the portal and be transparent in the middle. That's what we're doing, which means that first of all, we need to make a circle. So to do this, I like to use object coordinates because the coordinate system is centered at the center, right? Whereas something like a uh, generated or UV is centered at the bottom left corner. So I'm gonna be using object coordinates and you probably already guessed it. We're gonna be using a vector math node set to, set to length, which I guess I have to zoom out for this to update. So there we go, this is our length. And again, what this does is it takes input vectors being this coordinate system and outputs the length, the magnitude, the scale of the vector. So in the middle where the coordinate system is zero, 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 that vector has a length of zero, so it's black. And then as you get radially or spherically further away from the center, those vectors grow bigger in magnitude. So they get whiter and whiter and whiter. That's what's happening here. So if we were to take this and do a bit of math manipulation, again, we've gone from vector purple to float, scalar, uh, single value stuff. If we were to put some math nodes here, we could manipulate this into a ring. And normally what I have advocated for in the past, and you've probably, I've beaten this one to death, is use the uh, compare. And what it does is it lets you make a nice little torus that you control the kind of the radius of and the thickness of. And again, this works because you take one input, so the length that we had before, we're comparing it to this and we're saying, of these two values, are they with, okay, let me, let me try that again. We're saying, look at this value and look at this threshold. So go from 0.51 and look 0.08 this way and this way and compare it to this. So we're saying, where uh, is this comparison true? Where is it within that distance, that uh, length, that radius? Um, which is fine, but uh, you know, it gives us a very crisp line. So what I'm actually gonna advocate for instead this time is we're gonna use a subtraction. So right now we're just subtracting a length and 0.5 and all this. I'm then gonna take an absolute value. And for those of you who know a bit of real analysis, this is basically just like the distance metric. So we're saying, uh, take our values, compare them to 0.5 and output the distance. So towards here, it's gonna be very black because that's exactly where it's close or is 0.5. And then further away, either interior or exterior, it's gonna be um, wider. And you can see we can change this and to make this look um, kind of like the opposite where it's white and then black everywhere else, I'm just gonna use a map range node. A lot of math going on. Wow, that is not what I wanted. Let's do a map range node this time. Connect, connect. Ah, oh, this is a nightmare. Connect, get rid of that, connect. There we go. Okay, so now we have our, our map range node, which effectively does nothing. But if we were to invert this interval, 
like this, you can see we're actually getting our ring and we can control the thickness of it by changing our minimum value. So this still has a gradient. You see it's not just one value, it's like very bright in the center and it fades away. Uh, but this is exactly what we want. And we could actually change the fall off using some, you know, some exponential, so maybe you do power. And if you increase this, you can see it kind of changes that fall off, but whatever. Uh, we have our torus, so now let's talk about deforming it so it looks like this wavy energy portal. To do this, we're gonna use another classic uh, CG Matter default cube trick, and that is just gonna be taking these texture coordinates and distorting them. So we distort them, we uh, use some noise texture to incorporate it into here before we even do any of this calculation, meaning it's still gonna output a torus, but the input coordinate system is just gonna be a bit uh, muffled, a bit woo woo, you know? <laughs> So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a vector math node, set this to add, and we're just gonna be adding these two together. So you can think of this as our object uh, coordinates mixed together with some noise texture to add a bit of randomness. And of course, this does look a lot more random. It looks wavy, distorted, but it's been shifted over. And the reason for this is noise texture outputs a number between zero and one effectively at random at every point, which means on average, it's gonna be adding 0.5. So we're adding some number between zero and one, but since we're doing infinitely many of these on average, it's 0.5, meaning on average, we're adding the vector 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which translates it over. So to correct for this, you subtract the vector 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which keeps the ring nice and centered, and we could control the properties of this. But I always like to take it a step further with a scale node. Where is it? A scale node, so we can actually scale this correction vector, this 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we'll be able to scale it. And I also wanna scale the input noise by, by the uh, same value. Okay, so what is this doing? I'm saying I'm gonna scale this noise that we're incorporating. I'm gonna say what is the magnitude, the strength, the power of this randomness we're adding. And then I'm saying we do that, but then we also need to correct by the same level of scaled correction vector. So before it was like on average we're adding 0.5, but if we were to make the scale two on average we're adding one and et cetera, et cetera. So, now we can actually control how much distortion this has very nicely. And this noise texture controls the quality of that. So again, type of or amount of distortion versus type of distortion. So for the type of distortion, I'm gonna change this to four dimensional so we can make this nice and animated. I'm gonna use a driver, something like frame, which is gonna look at the frame number. So if we were to just do it like this, um, you can see as I go frame by frame by frame, it goes, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it changes way too quickly. That's what it looks like. It's pulsating very hard. Uh, so if we were to take this and make it like 10 times slower, divide by 10, does the same thing, just slower, although probably not slow enough. Let's try 60. And let's also switch to 30 frames per second. Okay, so now we have a very kind of like less intense thing going on. Let's also change the quality of this portal. So roughness is gonna make this very uh, scattered. Actually, I guess we should add detail first and then roughness is gonna make this scattered, so you can see what it's doing over here. So you can get different kinds of looking portals using this, and you're gonna notice that it kinda of looks like it's only pulsating on some parts of this, and to fix that, and to make it look more interesting, I'm gonna add a vector rotate node. This is one of my favorite tricks. This is why you need to use a 2.83, by the way. Uh, it doesn't exist in 2.82, the vector rotate node. Keep that in mind. Um, vector rotate node is gonna let us rotate, however, it looks like the circle's rotating around the wrong spot, right? It's kind of like not centered. And the reason for that is we are rotating around zero, 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 whereas we should be rotating about the center, which should be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, at least in the texture coordinate sense. So now we have this center, and now you can see that this rotation, which is kind of hard to tell that it's happening. So if I freeze the animation, you'll be able to see uh, it's centered on the center, okay? So we want uh, this animated in terms of the four-dimensional you know, four dimensional cross section thing. Uh, this W slider we want animated and this rotation we want animated by a driver. Again, if we were to just use the frame number, it rotates too quickly. So let's divide by 10. So now you can see this kind of jagged part of the portal is like swooping around and we can control the speed by saying, what do we want to divide by? And we can control the staticky, you know, noise by controlling this W, okay? So this is the basic portal. However, now we need to make sure that outside this ring, like this black exterior needs to be wall, this black interior needs to be transparent, and this white needs to be emissive, right? So transparent so stuff can go through it, emissive so the portal glows, and diffuse or wall so that it looks like it's not floating in space, okay? 
So in other words, everything we've done over here with these texture coordinates and then some math just gives us this black and white mask. And the rest of this is just gonna be some mixed shaders. So let's throw in a mixed shader. And I'm gonna start off by making it a wall on the exterior and a, and what, and transparent on the interior. And to do that, I'm not gonna use this map range mask we made, cause notice that again, it's a gradient. So it's not white and black, it's white and then grayish and then black. So I'm just gonna make a small modification. I'm gonna make a second branch of this with greater than. So now instead of subtracting 0.5 and getting the distance, we're just gonna see where is it greater than 0.5, which you can see once it updates, uh, gives us kind of the same portal. It's still rotating and does all that, but it gives us a very sharp cutoff. Um, and in this case, we want black to be transparent, white to be wall. So let's do that. We're gonna use this as the factor. We want black, uh, which is the top socket. We want that to be transparent. So transparent BSDF. And then we want the top being, you know, everything else. We want that to be diffuse or, you know, it can be metallic, whatever you want, just anything that is your surface. So, so like that. We're gonna let that load because the EV is dying today. And you can see that now we have a nice wall here that's actually affected by lighting conditions because of our diffuse. So if I was to move this around, whoops, if I was to move the light around, you can see it's actually changing the lighting conditions a bit, right? Um, but it's transparent in the middle, not really yet because we need to just do a quick change. But uh, if we were to go to material, go to blend mode, this is for EV by the way, and change this to alpha blend. Then once it updates, if it ever updates, <laughs> now it's gonna be transparent in the middle. Meaning uh, we can take an object like a cube and just pass it through and still be able to see it. It does look a bit weird with the lighting, so it's like kind of bright and then Im immediately goes to dark. That's an EV thing. Uh, if you were to do cycles, you see it doesn't have that issue. So final render is gonna be in cycles, but you can see now we can pass an object through it. So that is progress. Okay, so let's delete this cube. Now we have transparent. Did I try to save this? I guess so. Let's call this save. Good idea. Fingers instinctively hitting control S. Uh, so we have the wall transparent mask. And now let's slap on top of that our portal, our emissive orange or blue. So another mixed shader, emission. Dude, I have no idea. I think it's like a 2.9 thing, it's so slow. Uh, so emission on top, but not you know blended everywhere, right? Like it is now, we want it only where our portal is. So put in that map range node. And then once it updates, we have, we, we've hit it. So we, we can make this portal any color. And in fact, what I recommend is we can use our map range to create a nice gradient. So it's not just one color, but it kind of fades. Nope. We want to connect this to the color of the emission and feed in the map range. So what this does is it lets us control the primary color being something like orangey. And let's make that way brighter, like a 10 and make that bloom so it glows a bit. So this is the main color. And then as it goes to the rim, we can make that a different color. Like it could be a blue, a purple, whatever. I recommend picking a different fiery light color. It's like that. So now you can see everything's nice and incorporated together. And if we wanted to change the color, you can either change this color ramp or uh, pro trick hue saturation value. And once you connect that in, we're just gonna mess around with the hue uh, to change the color of what's going on here. So you could pick whatever color you want. Uh, but this is good to begin with. So now that we have our portal, let's just rotate it so it's a wall. We're gonna duplicate it. So we have a second portal. And for this one, I'm just gonna make a copy, a not an instance, but a duplicate. So we're gonna you know, make a copy and detach it. So in other words, this can be our blue portal and this can be our, where is it? This can be our orange portal. So for this one, we want orange. For the second one, switch over to the other material blue and set the hue saturation value, which I need to add back in, uh, set that to something different. And it kind of depends on what you want. I think for me, this is what I want. And now we have two portals that, you know, kind of do the same thing, but they have different colors. So they're kind of independent from each other. So rest of the tutorial, I guess, is really just uh, setting up <laughs> setting up our uh, scene so that we have a box going through it. So I'm gonna make a nice floor. And I guess that can be fine. And we move these up. And remember, we're not gonna be doing this render in Eevee uh, in the finale. We're gonna be using cycles. Uh, so don't worry if it looks like garbage right now, we will absolutely fix it. Uh, so for now, what I'm gonna do is again, these, um, these portals are based on object coordinates, which means I can just extrude this or actually move it over and it keeps the same position. So I'm just gonna use this to make a bigger wall. 
And now we can select both of these with shift clicking, edit mode. Now they move together, pro trick. And maybe make this go a bit further and this go a bit further. And now we have a very basic scene with the uh, moving portals. If you want this to be more intense, which I think I do. Again, we have a value slider just for how much uh, this noise affects it. And you can see we get very interesting effects if we make that, make that bigger. Uh, let's try 0.25, maybe 0.3, just so it looks a bit more chaotic. And for this one, we could pick something a bit different, or maybe we should pick the same, 0.3. Okay. Cool, cool. Now let's talk about uh, sending a box through this. So I'm gonna make this a bit higher, like that. Actually, never mind. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically use physics simulations to hit a box. We're not gonna animate it, but we're just gonna hit it. Uh, so it goes through one portal and then just duplicate it. That's the idea. So let's make a box. Uh, it can be any size, it doesn't really matter. Just put it somewhere like that, maybe a bit closer and we want this to be facing our portal, which it is. It can start off here, and then, is this the right size? Maybe a bit smaller. Then if we were to make this a rigid body, meaning, you know, say, give this physics, let it interact with things, we make this rigid body and this a rigid body being the floor, we make this one passive, so it doesn't fall through like it did. And uh, now you have this box just resting, and it might do a bit of a simulation in the beginning, but it's just resting there. And maybe it would be beneficial to move this light to the other side so we can actually see what's happening. Okay, so now we have a box, rigid body sim puts it on the floor, and then I guess we just hit it. <laughs> we, we just hit it with a bigger box. I mean, I don't know a better way to do it without animation. So I'm just gonna put a box here, and let's open up our timeline so we can animate. We're gonna give this a couple frames to settle down, and then we're gonna keyframe our box, have it go down four frames, and then just kind of hit it, location. So it kind of looks like that. And to make it actually interact, rigid body animated so it actually respects our keyframes. And now you can see the boxes hit. And did I do this? It's like a bit off. It's not too far off. It's going a bit too high. And to fix that, I guess all we need to do is change the rotation. So it's a bit more slanted. Let's see what that does. Closer. And I want this to not look like it's just so linearly moving. I want it to have a bit of rotation. Uh, so to do that, we're just going to add a tiny bit of variation. So it's a bit slanted. And you can see now it's kind of going in at an angle. And we could either like keep correcting this until it's right or, you know, <laughs> be happy with it. I think, I think this is fine. So I'm just going to wait for it to go through the portal. And then once it's here, I'm going to cheat a bit and just move the portal. Uh, so it's like perfect. And again, uh, if it's starting to get exposed, just take these and move the edges down. Okay. What do we got? We got a box going through and notice that once it reaches the other side, it does the whole collision thing, okay? So once we're happy with this uh, simulation, what we can do is yeah, make sure you're happy with it. Sorry for the cut, had a bit of a technical difficulty, but I think what I was talking about is we have this cube with a rigid body simulation. So goes through the portal and we want this to be deterministic in the sense that we want this to be keyframe, not simulated. And to do that, you just kind of play through the simulation, make sure you're happy with it. And when you are, just make sure your box is selected, F3, and run bake action. So you just type it in, bake action. And I was just struggling to get this to work, but now it does. So bake action, make sure all of these are enabled so that you don't have to worry about which checkbox it is. That's what I always do. Click OK. And now you're going to see that we get keyframes here. So we can remove this rigid body simulation. And it still moves in the same path. We can actually get rid of our collider. And you can see now we have a box that is animated and doesn't require any simulation. On top of that, since it's keyframed, you can, you can see in the beginning it kind of adjusts and then launches, right? So we can kind of fix that by just uh, shifting over these keyframes. So we can have it start off with the launch. So frame one, it's already launching and then it does the whole thing. Okay, cool. So now to have this actually go through the portal, like I talked about, we're not gonna do any kind of teleportation, but we could. Uh, what, I, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna make a duplicate, which has the same keyframes. We're gonna put our cursor exactly here. So I think that's Shift S, cursor to active. And here we're gonna make a empty. So Shift A, empty. So we move the cursor so that the empty can be put at the same spot. We take our second box and parent it. Shift, uh, click, Control P. Parent it to the empty. So now we can actually have the simulation, right? Same thing, but now we can kind of move it over and it does the same thing. Uh, but of course we wanna move it over by a very 
particular amount, okay? So we want to move, move this over so it's kind of like here, like that. And I guess what we should do, let me, let me redo this. I'm gonna do it so that it's parented, uh, but when it's actually going through the portal. So right there, there we go. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add in a, first we're gonna cursor to active shift S, then we're gonna add in our empty. We're gonna select our second box, second box, second box, parent it to the empty. This is killing me. We're just gonna hide this portal. Okay, let's try that again. We're gonna select the second box, parent it to the empty, control P. So now it does the uh, correct thing. And if we were to move this empty, it moves the simulation in some sense, although now it's keyframed. And then the second thing to get it going the other direction as if it comes through one comes out the other, all you have to do is rotate on the Z axis by 180 degrees, which doesn't only rotate the box on this frame, but on all frames. So this is what it looks like. So you can see if we look at this from the right perspective, it really does look like a teleportation. And some of these uh, glitching, glitches, like lighting glitches, again, are solved in cycles. Um, and you can see now the red glow actually casts on the cube and same with the blue. So we have this cool looking thing, which I can make look even cooler uh, if we don't see everything in the background. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, so you can see it does exactly what we expect. Now, of course, there is the the caveat that uh, if you kind of look at this from the right angle, you're gonna be able to see the second cube, I guess the first one in the back. So you can either change the camera angle or just animate the visibility of it so it actually becomes invisible after a certain point. But I guess you would, I don't know, I'd, I'd need to think about it a bit more, but if you wanna get rid of it, you totally can. Okay, final step is, you know, this one isn't really part of the tutorial. It's just, you know, I made a tutorial earlier about uh, making boxes with a nice material. I'm gonna make this not a boring box. Instead, I'm gonna append a material I made in a different blend file. Again, that's for the patrons. You already have this um, boxes, materials, and I think box one materials fine. So I just apply this. And now it looks like, you know, a more interesting box that, you know, some kind of postage. Uh, do the same thing for the second cube, which I'm gonna select here, make it a box. Nope, <laughs> selected the wrong thing clearly. How do I know if I'm selecting this right? Maybe, let's hide that. Okay, so now we make this also the box. There you go. And this should also keep the right side of the texture facing wherever it's supposed to. Let's make sure of that. So box comes in here and comes out there. I think that makes sense. And again, what I was talking about, this box in the background, you can either hide that or what I would recommend is you just pick a better camera angle because this one kind of sucks anyways. So let's do something like like this, kind of has a similar issue. Whatever, you can figure it out, just hide the box. That's what I did for my uh, render. Uh, but there you go, now you have the portal effect. The rest of this is just a bit of lighting and making it look cinematic. I used an orthographic camera, but you now know how to do the portal effect. Yay, I hope you learned a lot about procedural uh, materials and how to make this portal with vector rotate with noise and all that. Maybe a bit about how to bake a kind of bake a uh, physics simulation and duplicate it and move it so that it gives the right thing. And uh, yeah, that, that's the essence of the tutorial. If you enjoyed it and want to see more and want to support me and want to get behind the scenes and all this, Patreon is the place to do that. Of course, this, yeah, this tutorial will remain free, but for those of you who want a bit extra or just want to donate, uh, that is the place to do it. There are video courses, there are extra by video courses. I mean, sometimes they're video courses, sometimes they're extra tutorials. There's obviously the blend files, behind the scenes, Discord access, but um, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. That's the show.